Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing Throne of Glass and I'm going to be telling you why I didn't think it lived up to the hype. Let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to start out by reading the back of the book just to give you a brief summary, but I'm sure you've all heard of it because it is super popular on booktube. Let's dive in. Two men love her, the whole land fears her, only she can save them all. In a world without magic, an assassin is summoned to the castle. She comes not to kill the vicious king who rules from his throne of glass, but to win her freedom. If she defeats 23 killers, thieves, and warriors in a competition, she will be released from the prison to serve as the king's champion. Her name is Selena Sardothian. The crown prince will provoke her, the captain of the guard will protect her, and a princess from a faraway land will befriend her. But something evil dwells in the castle, and it's there to kill. When her competitors start dying one by one, Selena's fight for freedom becomes a fight for survival, and, desperate, and a desperate quest to root out the evil before it destroys her world. So... This sounds, from the back, like it's going to be some epic kind of adventure, maybe fantasy. Um, it sounds very intense, like it has a lot of action and violence. She's an assassin, she's the best assassin in the land, and it makes all these promises about this kind of action-adventure story. Um, and it also, I mean... It also promises a love triangle with the two men love her bit. Um, but yes, it promises to me a lot more than it gives. It doesn't feel like the back is an accurate representation of the story. So I'm just going to do a quick no spoiler explanation on why I think it failed. Um, and then I'm going to dive into a more complex, deeper examination of why I didn't like the story. So to me, besides the back of the book promising stuff that it didn't really uphold, it just, the story felt expected all the way throughout. I feel like a lot of people that I've seen do reviews of the book have said that it was very unexpected, like the characters or the story, and I just didn't feel that when I was reading it. And I will explain why later, but that'll be in the spoiler part, so we'll get more into that later. The second part that I didn't really like about the story was the love triangle. There are very few love triangles that I enjoy, and I just felt the one in this book was very mediocre. The guys were kind of the classic, one is friend zone, one is, you know, the charming, devilish type that you see in pretty much every love triangle. You see that in Gail and Peta. Peta's the charismatic, charming one, and Gail is the kind of friend. Um, and you kind of get that impression, even though they don't start out as friends. They just have that kind of feel to it, that kind of friendy feel, and then the other one who I, I'm not going to spoil, so I'm not going to say names yet, but the other one feels very charming and charismatic, and they have this kind of banter between them, and for me it just feels like a very expected love triangle because I've seen it before, so even though I like one of the guys, it doesn't really do anything for me. The last reason in the non-spoiler section that I didn't like this book as much as everyone else seemed to was Selena herself. Everyone loved Selena, and for me, she just was so overhyped and then underwhelming. She didn't embody all the change in the strong female character trope that everyone seemed to think that she did. To me, she was just kind of lame, and I'll go in more into that in the spoiler section, but I really didn't like Selena all that much. She just felt a little... Ugh. So that concludes the spoiler-free section. If you haven't read this book and want to keep the surprises as surprises, then probably stop now. Um, but if you don't mind spoilers, or if you have read the book already, then here's why I didn't like the book. Okay, so I'm going to start out with plot. The first bit that I didn't like about the plot was that all of the action seemed to happen off screen. Or not all of it, but at least most of it. What I mean by this is that in the training sessions and the competition, she describes a lot of things in a sort of summary of what happened, so she'll do these skips in time of like days or even weeks 
and she'll be like, oh yeah, this happened, there was this part of the competition, there was this fight, well, blah blah blah, these people died, like, it's just this massive jump and you don't really see the action, which was a problem for me because the back of the book promised a lot of action and adventure and competition and intensity and I feel like most of the story and most of that part of the story was just skipped over and just said in summary and for me that just didn't really work because that's a lot of what makes a story like this so interesting is being in the action. So that was the first thing that I didn't like about the plot. So the second thing that I didn't like was again about the the promise that the synopsis of this book made. And to me it felt a lot more like a love story, like a romance and a bit of a murder mystery than a fantasy action adventure type novel. Honestly, Selena's main story is about her discovering who the murderer is in the castle and not about the competition or her fight for freedom. So it's more about a story of survival by finding the murderer who's, you know, killing all these people in the castle, and it's also a lot about her romance with the two guys. And I have no problem with this, except for the fact that everyone who reviewed it seemed to promise this, you know, crazy action, violent story, and it just didn't deliver. So my expectations going in were just not met. And then adding on to that, another thing that I didn't like, which I touched on before, was that the love triangle to me just didn't feel that special. Um, so the problem is she made this action-adventure story into more of a romance, um, but then didn't deliver for me on the romance. So the two guys, Dorian and Kale, were the other parts of the love triangle, and I just felt that Dorian was the very expected charismatic charming prince who, you know, has a bit of a bad side, and they have this banter, and this, like, kind of sarcastic, like, you know, you know, because <laughs> you've seen it before, like I have. But Kale, on the other hand, who I liked more than Dorian, was very much the kind of friend type guy. He was very, you know, dependable and responsible. And you see that all the time. And it just felt that the two guys were very trope-like. You just find this a lot in love triangles. And I didn't find it that unique or original, which is why I think I was so disappointed because it ended up being more of a romance story and I wasn't that into the romance. So the biggest problem that I had with the plot in this story was the ending. And to me, if it's a murder mystery, which is kind of what it ended up being, it has to be an unexpected twist ending. You can't have an expected person be the one who is the murderer. She tried to throw us off by kind of framing Nehemia, who is Selena's best friend, but she dropped some really unsubtle hints about this brawny bully type guy who was from her training and he ended up being the murderer, shocker, and it was just very expected. It was exactly who I thought it would be, um, especially because she dropped such obvious hints with Nehemia. I was like, it can't be Nehemia. Um, and I really hoped it wasn't because she's my favorite character in this novel. Um, but yeah, I just, it was so expected and lame and just didn't do anything for me. Eh. All right, so number two is the writing. For me, the writing was fine, but it just wasn't that fantastic. Um, it just, the descriptions felt very usual, especially the character descriptions, you know, she had scarlet lips and this castle was, you know, stony gray, his eyes were stony gray, whatever. Just very expected kind of descriptive words and just nothing that special, nothing that really captivated me. So the writing was okay. I wasn't too mad at it. If it had been a great story with great characters, I would have been fine with it. But because everything else was so mediocre in my opinion, it just didn't help. And so the second part of the writing that I didn't like was the dialogue. And see, I, it's not that I didn't like it, it's just that it felt very young to me. It just didn't feel that mature. And for someone who is supposedly an assassin, who's lived through a lot, her dialogue just felt very young. and. 
honestly, it was actually probably some of the better parts of the story because it had a little bit more like pizzazz and flavor to it. Like it really, because her character descriptions were so mm, to me, it was a great way for her to characterize um, because each of the characters had individual voices, but I just felt it was a little immature and young. Um, again, not a huge problem, but wasn't fantastic either. Okay, so the last part that I'm going to dive into is the characters. Um, I actually really, really liked Nehemia. I thought she was a great character and was very well-rounded, and I was constantly being, not surprised, but engaged by her. Uh, and then also same with Kale. I thought he was pretty good, even though he's a little expected in the love triangle situation. I thought his character was you know, interesting and really offset Selena in a nice way a lot of the times. So I was impressed by Nehemia and Kale, but Dorian and Selena I found really, really annoying to be honest. Um, Dorian was just uh, so expected and not in the good way. Um, I didn't really feel anything for him, but I mean, he was fine, I guess. I guess. I don't know. He was Dorian. He was just, he was just a prince who is outgoing and charismatic and witty and banters and reads and whatever. He was, he was whatever. My biggest problem was Selena though, and that is because Sarah J Moss tried to break the strong female character trope or change it up a little, add some spice to it, but she went about it the wrong way in my opinion. I just found Selena to be annoying to be honest because she's supposedly this strong female character, she's this assassin, she's a badass, but all of her action or most of it at least happens off screen. So it's this one of those things where it's like it's said but it's not really shown. It's like, oh yeah, she's like this super badass assassin, but you don't get to see it, but I swear she is. Trust me, she's really cool. Um, and then the other thing that I really hated about her was that Sarah J Maas tried to break it a little bit, the trope, by making her like kind of girly things as well, but she did it in a way where it just made Selena come off as a bit vain and didn't add to the credibility of her as an assassin. It kind of undermined her character. So she was really into dresses and being beautiful and she liked having her hair clean and just, you know, she seems like the type of person who would hate to break a nail, which doesn't really add up to me if she's this badass assassin. You can't really have both. Um, so it just didn't feel like it fit for me and it also made her seem kind of shallow and vain and it didn't really add anything. Um, I think her best parts were her dialogue but again as I said before it felt a little young. She just honestly Selena was a bit of a disaster for me. I didn't like her pretty much at all. I saw what Sarah J Maas was trying to do but I just it didn't work for me at all. Alright so that wraps up my review on Throne of Glass. Next week on Friday when I post I'm going to be reviewing something that I loved so that you see I can be positive because I know the last two videos or this one and the last one that I post have kind of been negatives um, so if you haven't seen the other one and want to see me rant some more you can check that out uh, in the description box below. If you like this video please subscribe and like it and tune in next Friday to see some more.